Hello, Internet. So, yeah, Tekken here, and I'm back with the uh, PS3 game collection, Mirror's Edge. One of my favorite, mother favorite, one of my, uh, one of my other favorites. <laughs> New IPs this console generation. So, yeah, just, I'd really like to see a sequel. And it's like, there's been like all these talks about, yeah, it's being worked on. So, I'm hoping in the future, whenever it's polished up and really awesome, and like they take all the guns out of it, except make it even better. It'll be ready. It'll be ready. And we'll get some more parkour action because this game, although extremely short, very satisfying when you finally got the hang of it and like you just were like a ninja running around, disarming dudes, kicking them in the face, and being like, yeah, like freaking. It's like it's like a Trinity from the Matrix. You just run around, beat dudes up, and yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's really cool. And like the color scheme of like the white and red and very clean and. Yeah, I like this game a lot. I, li I like it a lot more than I'm saying, but I'm I'm trying to like not gush over all these games too much because you know we got games to go through here. Uh, Far Cry 2. I enjoy this game. The only thing I did not like about this game is the whole malaria thing. Everything else, well, I, eh, the gun jamming, eh, whatever, doesn't bother me. The car fixing doesn't bother me. Well, actually, the one thing that does bother me is the outposts. Is like how you would take an outpost. But then the enemies would um, repopulate it. So it's kind of like the thing that they fixed in this game that they, after in Far Cry 3, was that the after you took an outpost, that the enemy would no, no longer return to the outpost. Because like in this game, you could get all the outposts, and then the enemy would still be spawning. So it's like you're still having trouble getting through the map. Why even bother with the outposts? So yeah. Stories. 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 The story is actually better in this game. The ending is, eh, but whatever. It at least it tried. Like it, it tried. Far Cry Three, I don't feel like it tried. <laughs> Far Cry Two though, does has a lot of uh, cool stuff going on, and the whole like partner mechanic when you have like a a dude or a lady that comes to your rescue when you're in trouble. That was pretty cool. I haven't played this game in a long time, so I'm trying to think of like any other cool stuff. Oh, the fire. That that was cool. But it's in three, so it's basically like a lot of the stuff from three. No, that's not true, actually. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Cause, like, I played 3 recently, and then, like, going back to 2, it made it awesome. I don't know. It's it's a good open-world first-person game. It's not as much area to cover. And, yeah, like, the outposts are kind of eh, but it's, I still enjoyed it. Valkyria Chronicles. This game. Yes. This game. Also one of my favorite games of ever. Top 20. Um... Also one of my favorite new IPs of this console generation. Too bad we didn't get like a, another console version. We got PS... I think Valkyria Chronicles 2 is on PSP. Actually, I think I have that game. I haven't, I haven't installed it on my PSP yet. I think 3 is also on PSP, but only in Japan. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's like a... Ta like it, It's hard to describe, man. Because I actually have a gameplay of it on my channel. I might put a... Annotation here, huh? <laughs> But, um, <laughs> it's like a squad based tactical uh, game strategy. But you have to get these little outposts on the map. And, like, it's about controlling the outposts and also completing objectives. So it's actually, there's like a lot more to it than just, you know, getting your units and then getting all, like, killing all the enemies. So, yeah. And then some DLC came out, and I bought all the DLC. So I was hoping, like, if everybody bought all the DLC, then Sega would be like, "Oh, we have, we have, okay, people like this game." But I don't know. I guess not. I know I bought it. I bought like all the DLC, even though I only used the, uh, like, two of them, which was one of them was like sec a second squad of characters that you got from the single player, but they're on their own mission. And then the other one is being able to control um, this lady. I forgot her name. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like another super hard mode, but I was like, I don't know, playing super hard mode because, yeah. <laughs> Grand Turismo 5. I've sunk so much time into this game and not unlocked everything <laughs> because the problem with Grand Turismo 5, I'd say the only problem, is that towards the end of the game, the the grinding to level up gets ridiculous and it's just not fun anymore at the end and you get really crazy endurance races it's like 24 hour stuff and 
Oh, you cannot be spec mode it. Because be spec mode, I cleared. A spec mode, however. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I could, I, I could go and try to do some of these A spec mode races, but man, they are hardcore. And it's weird because, like, I'm trying to think, did I do that in 4? But in 4, you had B spec mode as well, and you could just, like, B spec everything. So I did that on a lot of things that were crazy, like the freaking uh, endurance races in this one. But you know, besides that, the uh, actually I think I'm I'm gonna. Uh, What's well, funny? I like want to put up a, a, a playthrough video of the um, I think it's called like Grand Tourism mode, Grand Tour mode, where you do a bunch of events in different um, different styles and different. What's that word? Ah, <sighs> there's a word for it. <laughs> there's a word for it. You don't say. But um, yeah, and like upload that. So I already have videos of it on my channel. So whatever. Oh man, not only do I have one copy of this game, I have two copies of this game because that's how much I effing love heavy effing rain. David Cage, Quantic Dream, you you people there do amazing work. I don't care what people say about, oh, there's plot holes, yeah, there's plot holes, whatever, I don't care. Or, oh, the QTs, blah, blah, blah. F up. I like the QTs. It, it felt me, it, I felt very immersed when my character could, di could die at any moment. And if my character dies, the story changes. And I don't know which way it's going to go. And who knows who the killer is until the end. And well, all these clues and everything that's happening. And the character development. And dialogue. And when you're making a decision. And all the stuff's like floating around your head. And you're like, oh, I got to push the button. But I can't see what it is because it's floating so fast. And you're like, oh, I just... Heavy Rain kills it, and then and, uh, oh, and then also the, the soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. It's just very depressing and sad, and just sets such a, a sober mood for the game. Dun 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 dun. Okay, I'm not gonna hum the whole thing, but still love it. And then like this 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 game this or er, this uh, director's cut. I would like to play one day with the move, which I do not own. So you know. I probably should, you know, just, I would play this, or I would buy a move just to play this game with the move controls, because, oh my gosh, man, like, the, where's my controller, where's my controller, when you're playing, and like, there is stuff going on, and you're just like, pushing, but, well, it's not this button mashy, but it's like, you are just like, so in, because it's like, I didn't want to push the wrong button, and someone died, and just, QTs are going, and you're like, er, 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 er. it's like one button. When one button press can mean the difference between life and death, like, what game have you ever played where that's the case? Like, oh, I could live, I could die. It'll completely change the story by one button. There's no game ever that I've played where it's like, oh man, if I push the wrong button, one button pushed, I'm a, someone's gonna die, and this door's gonna. <sighs> that game. I really sucked to be in, and I was just, I loved it. From start to finish, I don't care what anybody says, F the haters, Heavy Rain, one of my my favorite games of all time, in the top ten, for sure, it's just so good, so good. It's like, ah, uh, just, t uh, before I move on, F, F Transformers. So it's like, freaking, like, like, the game, it's like, you get all these characters that you get to play as, and like that you meet and get all this character development so you get to like feel and know them so it's like to me i feel that anybody that enjoyed the walking dead game should play this game because there's like very like parallels here of stuff that goes down and just the way you feel while you're playing because any moment something could happen and it could have drastic effects on the game and what happens and it has a lot of replay value and just so good so good Ah, ah, heavy rain. Oh, we, oh, yeah, and like the whole origami killer. Sure, they say origami killer. No, oh, my camera's out of focus. I'm sorry. Let me try to fix that. Nope. But yeah, like I'm saying. So it's like, yeah, sure. So ah, oh, it's not in focus. Fantastic. Great, great job, Tekken. It's like, yeah, they have like the whole origami killer. But I mean, come on, come on. I mean, <laughs> origami killer, <laughs> origami, origami. Who's what difference does it make? Okay, there we go. I'm back in focus. Focus. <laughs> they get, they can't help with their fringe. Like, come on, come on. Um, Transformers Fall Cybertron. This game, perfect, 
perfect, dare I say, adaptation of the franchise. Like, as a prequel leading into G1, so good. Just amazing. Like, mm, it just kills it. Just so, like, t- okay. Before I continue, <laughs> I just, I just like to take a, take a moment of, like, thought and happiness and be all, you know, one thing about this console generation that didn't suck all the time. It sucks some of the time, but not all the time. Towards the end, where we're at right now, we got really, really good at this. So it's like, we have really good licensed properties that get added dead dead blah Adapted into video games like Transformers, uh, Fall of Cybertron and like Batman Arkham City. Sure there's still crap out there, like freaking aliens colonial marines. But you know, that's a whole other story of like, oh we made the game. It was a bait and switch though, because another team was working on it, and their game overwrote our game when we went to give our version of the game back to them. And uh, and like friggin' oh yeah, there's like the terrible like Iron Man and Hulk games, but uh, still, we had some of like the best licensed games of all time. I would say this gen, this in Arkham City, and like yeah, there's other crap of. Okay, okay, I guess it's not true. Like I guess some really really good and some really really bad. Okay, that's. Back to the topic. Cyber- <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> Follow Cybertron. Why is it so amazing? G- like I said, G1 prequel and like leads into it so good. Actually, it's mostly inspired by like the. It's not like a complete G1, like one to one, but still, it can be like seen as like a good telling of like what happened before that because it, li- it ends with like the arc and the nemesis and like giant stuff happens. It's so good. The ending, so amazing. Like, I, it's funny because I played this after I played Mass Effect 3, so it's like, I got the <laughs> I got the closure I needed in this story. <laughs> I wish I would have gotten in Mass Effect 3. It's like, it ended, there's a giant fight, where it wasn't just, just Shepard, because, oh, Shepard, <sighs> I'm not going to talk about that. Transformers. Father. <laughs> Why is it so awesome? You get to play multiple characters, as you can see on the cover. You get Optimus Prime. You get Grimlock. You get Bumblebee. And there's even a section with Metroplex in it, and you can totally call him in and be like, Metroplex, take these dudes down. Optimus Prime doesn't say that. He doesn't say take these dudes down. <laughs> so yeah. And then also, if you look at the back, you can play as Bruticus as a section. Megatron, of course. Hellard Megatron. So good. So good. Dialogue, so good. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just gushing over this game because it's like I just talked about all these other games are awesome and it's just like a train of awesome like choo 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 coming through. Sorry. So you know, you're on Cybertron after the events of uh, War for Cybertron, which is just was a another amazing game. I will add. Um, so this one takes place after that, and then you know you gotta flee Cybertron. All the stuff goes down of like showing why you gotta leave, and like, why there's no more inner John left. <laughs> oh man, it's just so good, like, the cast of characters, you have Jazz, Cliff Jumper, Dinobots, you get to play a Starscream, amazing part of Starscream, I might add, not only is it amazing, but since, like, they, they, like, did cool stuff with their adaptations of, like, the franchise, like, he's, like, a stealth dude, so he has, like, these awesome stealth moments, ah, so good, so good, like, you get to play some Megatron, it's awesome, as Combaticons, when you're Bruticus, I, I don't even, I'm just done. I'm just stop talking, because that game. If you're not a fan, then I'd say you can try it out. If you're a fan, though, you need to play that game. Wow. From one awesome license game to another. <laughs> Batman Arkham City. Man. Oh, this game. Let me put it next to my face, because it's definitely in my top 20. <laughs> but, um, Yeah. What's, what's there not to like about this game? Like, the way it starts, so good. And then the combat, I have said this for a long time after playing this game. Best 3D combat game of this console generation so far. Like, the whole parry, like, the, pa- the rock, paper, scissors of, like, you can parry stuff, you can dodge stuff, and then, like, after you get your combo up and you've upgraded your skills, you can do your, um, like, one-hit knockout, or you can do your uh, area attack, or your weapon break attack, or your gadget quick attack. Also, the other gadgets, the gadgets in this game, killing it. Story is amazing as well. So good. Like the only 
So outside the combat, like the story's really good. The only thing I did not like is that since it's Gar since it's Arkham City and it plays into the whole fact that like a whole t section of the city has been turned into Arkham to house the criminals, like you don't get access to the whole city. So I'm really hoping in Arkham Origins, like you get the whole city to go around and also the challenges. While amazing, you don't get those characters in the campaign. You can only get them in challenges. So it's like, yeah, you can play as Nightwing and Robin and Catwoman. Well, Catwoman has like, her own section in the single player, but it's really small and just like a slice to the side. And Robin has like his DLC, but it's... Oh, that DLC was terrible. It's just like a deleted scene of, oh, well, this has happened after the story, huh? <laughs> it's like you don't get to play as those characters in the Arkham City where you can just like like go through the city and like run up on some thugs, beat them up future age style, and just like keep doing that. And like it just works so good as Batman is like a beat em up and like it's perfect. The gameplay it just best 3D combat of this console generation. Uh of like three D melee combat, I should specify. <laughs> Moving on. Whew, I'm sorry. G gushing like that kinda kinda tires me out. <laughs> no it doesn't. Moving on. Arkham Asylum. Uh a another good licensed game, also by Rocksteady. And then this is the uh, PS3 version with the Joker stuff in it, which I don't think I even really played, but whatever. So it's it's basically Arkham City, but not as good because it doesn't have all that stuff. But it's got just as good a story, just as good as combat. Okay, the combat's not one to one. There's some new stuff in that one that's not in this one that makes it better. But for what it was, this one was like really good too before that one. So, yeah. But it's, it's also worth playing. Like, these are both worth playing if you're a fan of Batman because it's just so, so good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Sonic. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. This game, I'd say get it because it's a lot cheaper than buying all these uh, separate games. There's what? How many games are on here? I don't know. Oh, there's over 40 games on here. So basically, you buy this game and you're saving like a ton of money because it's cheaper than buying all the games that are on here like separately. Especially if you can get it for cheaper on sale, which I think I might have, but I'm not sure. Whatever. Um, because like all the different games that are out that are on like Steam or Xbox Live Arcade or PSN or Virtual Console, like yeah, you can go out and buy these separately. But if you do that, you'll just you'll be spending way more money than you should. Uh. Also, I'd say get it on PS3 because the D-pad on the 360 is terrible, and it's not the same if you're playing that game with the analog stick, in my opinion. But I am one of those old school people who played back in the day on a D-pad and two buttons, so... Uh. Um, the yeah, Street Church 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, freaking Shining... Shining... Shining Force? Is that what it's called? Is that, the, is that the tactical strategy game that's on here? I think it's Shining Force. That game. Uh, Earthworm Jim went into some other stuff. I don't know. Like, not all the games are on here, so it's kind of hard to see. Some Vector Man. Some, uh. Some Revenge of Shinobi. It's Kid Chameleon. Oh man, Kid Chameleon. Beyond Oasis. Fantasy Star. 1 through 4, I believe. I know 1 through 3. I'm not sure if 4 is on here. 4 is probably on here. I mean, all four Fantasy Star games. On a disc. Come on. How can you not like that? All right, and it's almost almost at twenty minutes here, so I'll I'll take a quick break and come back with some more gushing of PS3 or current gen awesomeness. Because <laughs> like a lot of these are like multi platform. Well, not all of these, but some a lot of these are multi platform, so it's on 360 as well. But we have a uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, and wow. Okay, so like this game's amazing and everything, but I would I would still say that the original is like just like a, a hair better. Just because of like the way the skill system is, I mean, technologically it's like graphically better and like everything. It looks better, plays better. But the original, it's like they do stuff with the whole like character building that is not done in this one, to where you're building like as far as like from like the role playing side, if you like develop your skills a certain way. The first game I I felt was just like I felt like a stealthy hacker dude that had like super speed or not. Was it super speed or like jumping? Whatever. The way you could like, like the way you had like a choice in like how to like do your uh, upgrades 
on the first game. On this one, it's just like you get the uh, whatever whatever they're called, <laughs> something that lets you like augment yourself, but you have to like a certain amount sometimes. So yeah, it's still good. It's still good. Like it's a it's good open world, quasi open world. I would say well not quasi. I mean faux open world, because like there's there's parts where it's like an open world environment, but it's not super large. It feels very small, and there's no cars on the street, but it does a good job of it. Um, storage great, char- <laughs> game gameplay is great. It, it's fun. It's fun. Like stealthy, sneak up on dudes. Oh, that's the other thing. Is like this game is very open, just like MGS4, where it's like you could be completely stealthy and like sneak by, not kill anybody except for the bosses. Wii U version, you can play. You can play and like not kill bosses. I think. Whereas in this one, you have no choice but to kill bosses. But um, but yeah, like I was saying, like you can be stealthy or you can be like, uh, weapons free, guns hot. <laughs> Go loud, go loud, like shoot up everything, kill everybody. Doesn't matter. Oh, also like the dialogue system is really cool because you have parts where you have to like either interrogate people or like try to like stop them from doing things or like talk them in into or out of things and just that was really good. Story's good, music's good, gameplay amazing. Uh, yeah, really good game. <laughs> it's been twenty minutes I've been talking about games. Uh, so I'll take a break right here and come back with the next set after this.